What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the flannel panel. We have a wonderful, fantastic show today. Um, let's just start by doing this. Look oh, at this. Look at it. We are live streaming CD Reeves 813 Art House. Uh, he's going to be doing a painting for a, a special event that we'll kind of get into later. So stick around, make sure you watch it all. And uh, and we'll check it out. So this month is Movember or November, sorry. Uh, but the Movember campaign is happening. And my buddy Dave, who is, uh, as Natalie, sa Natalie says, the Canadians being late, uh, is going to jump on a little bit. And they're running a Movember campaign uh, for the Brolaz, which is their company. Uh, they've done it the last two or three years, I believe, and, and has raised, raised some significant money um, uh, for this thing. And that's for men's mental health. When he jumps on, I'll get him to talk a little bit more about it. So um we got a little bit of a canadian takeover and Corey painting because not only is my buddy dave jumping on but andrew's here what's going on andrew good evening gentlemen andrew has his, andrew has his shirt on the last time uh you saw him was a little uh you might have been a little pickled possibly hey, well it's only the first drink tonight too so okay who's to say what are you drinking the for real mustache for Movember. Yes. <laughs> I'm uh, drinking Stag Jr. Here, let's throw that mustache up there for Movember. Look at that beauty. <laughs> You're drinking Stag Jr. Troy, what do you got yes, in uh, what do you got in your cup tonight? I'm trying my first sip of uh, the 2XO Phoenix blend. So uh, I've been anxious to try it or excited to try it. And tonight's the night. And so far, it's not disappointing. So. If you get the chance, I say pick one up. Oh, we got hot girls here. Oh, there it was blocked. Um, yeah, <laughs> Troy got excited for a second. Say Dixon Deadman and all those people show up. Uh, so you got two XO, which is you got a couple last week, didn't you? Yeah, well, we uh came across it. Uh, Dave went to Kentucky, found some, and we he bought a case. I, <laughs> That's what he does. He says, how many you want? I'm like, I'll take two. He said, well, I bought six. How many you want? So. Nice. <laughs> oh, Jason's our, uh, our mod. Jason couldn't be here. He's got to work tonight. But uh, I think Jason might have the most FOMO ever right now. Because he is a connoisseur of Corey's painting. Um, and he's got to be at work and just, and just hang out and chat. So I could see him rushing to the truck and jumping on at some point. But. Uh, Conway's here. Conway's got some Boomtown for the win. Uh, oh. There we go. Boomtown is Corey. That was Boomtown 1, too, wasn't it? A Knob Creek pick. Lovely. Oh, 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 and oh, look right. at that. Dave has uh, joined hey, We just went 60% Canadian. <laughs> wait, wait. I'll put... Uh... Jean jacket on. Oh, there we go. And now we're nice. more Canadian. <laughs> it's Sweet. true. Canadian tuxedo. I got jeans on and a <laughs> jean jacket. How do you like it now? Look at that. Jean and on the jean. Stash. Look at that stash too. Jean jacket and stash goes together like bourbon and Ian. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. So Corey's underway here already, is he? Yes, I see some this blue paint and some scraping. Fancy, uh, some blacks fancy going view on here. Look at this. We're watching uh, a masterpiece take shape. I'm this really excited awesome. to see how this comes together. I don't, I have a really funny thumbnail that'll be used at some point. And it's you know, the picture of the guy walking with his girlfriend and staring at the other girl, the meme. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. It, yeah. And it's it's the guy holding Bob Ross's hand like it's Bob Ross's head, and he's looking at Corey. <laughs> and I'll, I'll use it. I'll use it at some point for a thumbnail because I think it'd be hilarious. That's um, awesome. But yeah, uh, this is gonna be fun. So we're gonna do this. Uh, Corey is 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 painting this specially for the Brolas, I believe. Love it. Yeah. What? Uh, not not for the Brolas. Like they're not getting it. But no, no, no. There, there is a chance for you possibly to get this because it's Movember. And what it, would you mind explaining what Movember is, Dave? Yes. So Movember is a month where we grow mustaches. 
um, to raise awareness and raise funds for men's health. It started off in the uh, prostate cancer realm and testicular cancer, and now it's kind of broadened into men's health as a larger conversation. So mental health, physical health, all of the things. And it's a month to have conversations. So we like doing this because mental health is something that we love to talk about within our business, within our platform, um, with our friends and family, because it's not something that's often talked about, especially by men. Um, so we started doing Movember. We're in our third year now. Different people do this. Anybody can start a page and raise money. This is our third year doing it. Before, we weren't really allowed to grow mus mustaches when we were working on TV because we had to be continuity. You couldn't all of a sudden go from a beard to a mustache in the same day. Um, but since we've been off the TV and we've been allowed to do it, we've really enjoyed the time that we've been able to put into it. So last year, we were able to raise $7,500 for Movember, which was the most we've ever raised, which was it blew us away and it was absolutely incredible. We did like a live telethon to end it all. And we were trying to reach our goal and clients of ours that we had just finished a project for donated over two grand to bring us to the limit that we were wanting to get to, which blew us away. But it just shows that the conversations that you have with the people around you make an impact and make a difference. So us, having mustaches while we worked for these clients and we're talking to them about our mental health journeys. And the husband had actually just been going through a really hard time because he had lost a coworker um, and he was really struggling with that. So he really appreciated us being vulnerable and open to talk about it. And they ended up donating a huge chunk of money to uh, put us over our, our goal. Uh, so yeah, so I'm super appreciative that Corey is doing this for us and for you guys having me on today to talk about this and hopefully raise some money with some beautiful art. Yeah. So we'll take a look at this because I like this view a lot. Yeah. Uh, Corey's throwing this up for, uh, for some, for some fundraising, fundraising for Dave. So we're not sure how that's going to work. We're thinking maybe an auction or, or something like that and see, uh, how that could happen. Uh, but beyond that, we're also going to throw in uh, a little raffle. Um, so I got this bottle of El Elmer T. Lee that I've had for a long time. Um, and I'm going to throw it out there. So what the plan is, is five bucks donated to uh, the Bro Laws Movember campaign. We'll get you into the raffle. So I will throw and and just take a screenshot of your donation. Uh, email it to if the banner shows up flannel panel streams at gmail.com uh, and you'll be entered in this into a spreadsheet and we'll do a raffle at the end of the month. So you have two ish weeks till the end of the month and, uh, and we'll do that raffle uh, as time goes on. We'll see, maybe we'll get more generous and, and throw some other things in that raffle, whatnot. So uh, it could be fun. Love Can it. I say Ian? Yes. I'm already in 50. And so I challenge everybody that's watching tonight. If you have the money to also donate 50 bucks. That's awesome. Is that a PayPal or something, or what is that? Uh, and it's fifty Canadian, so it's really like almost free in the United States. <laughs> so you got you got a discount, yeah. yeah. Um, no, you'll get a discount. So the link to the Movember website is in the comments or the description of the YouTube channel, the YouTube show. So click on that if you want, and we'll have some posts on the Brolaws uh, Instagram page, Flannel Panel uh, Instagram page. Uh, and then a few others. And and we want to say uh, thanks to Natalie because she is the best person in the world uh, to post everything. And it's awesome. <laughs> but Natalie does have a question. And there's a bunch of people jumping on tonight, which is great. We got. This looks awesome. Yeah, look at uh, this. Jason, the podcast is here. Um, Clint's here. Conway says agreed. Uh, and. This just got way too Canadian. Is yeah, that I mean, possible? Is that possible? 60 40. I mean, 60, 40. yeah. The Grease is here. Uh, and this was the question that Nat had. It says, So, Andrew, describe the difference between all three of your Canadian accents. Hmm. I don't know that, like, Dave sounds a little more Ontarian than you do, Ian. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you sound, it's so funny how much more Canadian you guys sound than people out West, I would say. 
Oh, oh really? really? I I think so, but I maybe that's just my ear. I don't know what the Americans think about the difference between our accents. Yeah, right. I've got a friend. From, uh, <laughs> right. I've, I've got a friend from Regina, and they do a podcast called the Ultimate Deck Shop Podcast or something like that. And when I was listening to it, my wife was like, oh, my God, they're Canadian, aren't they? And because all of their little inflections, you could just tell they're Canadian. Canadian. I think we do a little. Can he, I think there's a, I don't know, are we nasally? I don't know. <laughs> but is, have you, you got me on the Smart List podcast, Dave. And yeah. Will, Arnett, Will Arnett's on there. He's a Canadian. Right. And he goes into the Canadian mode. And they just had Wayne Gretzky on as the guest. And he went pure Canadian. It was so funny. It was a, it was a great podcast. That's, that's a good one to check out. Maybe it's just a tip. Um, but yeah, he went from like just Will Arnett to like super Canadian Will Arnett. It was hilarious. But. So did Corey give us any preamble here as to the strategy? No, I think we need to I need, I need talk to, to the artist. Here, Corey. Nope. Yeah. Grease is saying anyone want to match me matching Andrew. So yeah, the, the challenge Grease. is out there. I love it. I love it. Uh, so I don't usually start with any kind of ideas, which is a weird way to paint. So it's all emotion and color. Cool. Uh, I usually music, so I'm missing music. Um, oh, I'll sing then. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Dave's the best yeah, choice yeah. for singing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Corey Hart memorized. Yeah, no need to <laughs> black, though. Um, so... Uh, yeah, it all just goes by feel a lot. So um, a lot of the painting is just color. And then there's a, usually a lot of intersection of color, which is usually, so painting is my mental health release, right? So it's all kind of the crisscross of uh, where I'm feeling that day and stuff like that. So you'll see a lot of intersection and hard angles and then the kind of the rough edges of abstract work. So it just kind of either happens or it doesn't. And when it doesn't happen, I just paint over it. <laughs> and is painting something you've always done or is this new to you no i started uh in november last november when my uh my best friend eric got real sick with cancer and i just needed to produce something tangible right as a as opposed to something that's screen oriented which was what i normally do wow so um yeah i just wanted to produce something so i started painting and then it just kind of took off as a thing so i have like a gallery opening in a couple weeks and I sold them and and uh, I've started doing some uh, some prints for like a medical office. I like, guess crazy. So, but uh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, he's killing. I it. had yeah. totally thought that you had like an art background, and you kind of had gone away from it for a little bit, and then your friend going through that brought you back into the paint mode. So that's incredible to find out that you're just winging it. You just just letting your feelings fall on a page, and people are recognizing it and showing you love. So I love yeah. that. Yeah, I did a lot of graphic design, but this is a, I just wanted to produce something that wasn't just me sitting in front of a screen more. I do enough of yeah. that all day. And That's it's awesome. looking awesome. Uh, no, so I December 7th, I believe, Corey, December 7th is the 813 Art House open yeah. house, or, or what would it be? The well, Blue Christmas Party. We're going to play some Elvis the music. Blue some Christmas music. Party. Put some art up and see if I can't get some people to drink and make bad decisions with their money right before Christmas. <laughs> Corey, I'm just going to crack. Oh, oh nice. that's a quality bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Can there we uh, can we hire somebody to walk around with a laptop and just have our heads on it so that yeah. we can look at the paintings and and bid on them? I'm quite sure. Ma manage something. <laughs> yeah, like a and... robot. Like a, just get like a Zumba or whatever, like Roomba, like one of the That's floor true. things. We'll just stick a laptop to it. Yeah, an iPad on it and just walks around. Hey guys, <laughs> how are you guys? Um, not saying not winging, it, not winging it. You're crushing it, Corey. Yes. Which is the truth. It's the truth. And Whiskey Eyes is here. Hey -o. See you, Con. Oh, Jason, I picked the wrong comment. Conway's saying Canadians end every sentence like it's a question uh, rising at the end. I yes. think that's that sounds right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I guess so. Damn, now I'm thinking about every way I talk, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Troy... having a hard time talking just because I'm watching Corey paint. So it's like <laughs> Yeah. 
it's it might be distracting this is the first time we've been talking about this for a long time and Corey's like we got to do a live stream and set it up and then dave uh was doing the movember campaign and, and Corey's right in there with this and if you if you didn't see what the words were at the bottom of this jump back uh, and rewatch this we'd love the view as well as uh, uh you'll see what the base layer of it and it's uh it's pretty cool and Corey, if you want to just say anything about that i can unmute you if you want yeah i wrote anxious on the canvas a couple times before we started and then we paint over top of it because that's what the painting does so. yeah, oh so i love it got some special uh beneath the layers right troy were you, yeah were you it's feeling like nervous layers. were you feeling nervous and anxious doing this live all day, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, just how you figure out what, like what color, what tube of color he's grabbing next. And it's pretty cool. So, Troy, you've done some painting too, haven't you? Yeah, but nothing like this. I've done, I've actually uh, done like the Bob Ross style painting. So, yeah, I've got it, but it's been a while. But is that a new flannel you got on too? I'm sorry, what? Is that a new flannel you got on? No, I've had this. This is a uh, high dollar. This is a Duluth flannel from. Uh, oh, yeah. Fancy. I've. So what, uh, what do we I've have to a... do and raise to get Troy to grow a mustache? Oh, oh dang. Oh, dang. He says. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I should have. I went out, you know, I just came back from seeing, visiting Jason in Utah and I forgot my razor. And uh, that would have been the perfect opportunity. It was like the like November third. It would have been the perfect opportunity to start growing a beard. But uh, <laughs> Jason actually gave me a razor, so yeah. yeah but uh, he's just so nice. I think last time I came on Ian's birthday and surprised you guys, Andrew, and we were talking about Ron Jeremy. Were we not? <laughs> That's oh, right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. All that was, there there was some pictures and in my much longer hair days yes that's funny <laughs> where is troy's ascot from last night so whiskey mutant is referencing last night because troy you were on bar night at home uh yeah we're back you're bar back. back and he was calling you troy minnick i think wasn't it yeah i think that was out of line I, but, <laughs> we did the uh connoisseur uh, old forester uh lineup last night and let me tell you oh nice sp spoiler alert 1920 is the best out of the whiskey row series <laughs> well especially for you yeah it's the only one with proof we actually ranked them according to proof mm -hmm. nice dave what do you got going on tonight uh what are you drinking i just, I just quickly poured a four roses oh nice four roses single barrel just uh, just needed to throw something in my cup bowl. It turned things on. I, I noticed Dave's like got a little whole... eeny, meeny, miny, mo. But actually, I still have uh, some of Andrew's uh, oh. WLW. Look at that. That was from the birthday sent. stream, too. Yeah, because I was saving it to be able to have again with Andrew. I wanted to be able to give him a shout and have it. So tonight's the perfect night for it once this one's gone. Perfect. I'll have to go dig that bottle out. <laughs> you got the stag vertical though, don't you? You got a whole well, bunch now I except I've skipped over to Corey's blue note. Oh which is amazing, actually. So yeah, I don't know. I'm I, I'm all over the place tonight. So we got uh Andrew drinking Corey's pick. We got Conway drinking Boomtown One. Yeah, so Corey's getting lots of love tonight with the picks. Nice. And if you have an opportunity, uh when Corey does those. Uh, those Boomtown picks are pretty cool, and the stickers on them are incredible. Guess yes. who makes the stickers? Guess who makes the stickers? Yeah, Corey. Well, of course. <laughs> 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 and that is true. Oh, yeah, I did not see that coming. I did not see that coming at all. It looks great. I think that's one of the things I've loved about Corey's paintings is the color that he splashes into it. And I don't know what the colors mean to him when he's using them, but yeah. I absolutely love them. There's a purple one that he has that has like some purple drizzle almost, I think, on it that I love. 
Yeah. Yeah, I find the the ones he does with, with purple are my favorites. I don't know why. I didn't know I was a purple guy, but right? those are my yeah. favorites. Tommy's here. And uh, agrees with saying, Corey, you're blessed, buddy. It's true. You got you got some talent. And Tommy D, we haven't seen this guy in a little while, it feels like. Maybe he missed, one, he missed one week. Yeah, that's that's a... That's like fourth grade school picture right there. Yeah, I guess so. Tommy's got the biggest beard. It's fantastic. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. And he's always been around, so it's good. Uh, Whiskey Moon's in, in the house, which is awesome. We haven't seen him for a little while. Um, Eric, uh, so check out Whiskey Mutant on Instagram uh, for some pairing advice because that's some good stuff. I just had a butter tart earlier, so. Oh, so speaking of Canadian content, butter tarts are mm. Canadian. Mm. Don't know what that is. You don't know what a butter is? That a little Debbie product, or is it... no? It's a, it's a pastry based. It's like a mini pie. Oh. You can make them at home. Sugar oh. and, and you butter. can store by them too, but yeah, it's fantastic. Troy, you would love it. My oh, wife I'm sure went, I would. My wife went shopping, I think it was Sunday evening, and I was like, Don't come home without butter tarts. <laughs> <laughs> so good, and yeah. they do pair really well with uh, with whiskey. Yeah. Natalie throwing shade. Oh. Uh, no, <laughs> it's got all the flavor, oh, all the flavor. Throw some pecans on top. Yeah. Huh. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. It's kind of like pecan pie. They with it so well with any yeah. bourbon too. Yeah, it's true. Just like it's the good. caramel rich, the butteriness of it with any type of whiskey is mm -hmm. just fantastic. And now, I'm an emotional, it. I'm an emotional eater too. So it's been like it's been a long day, and it's been a long weekend with my kids being sick and stuff like that. So. When my wife went shopping, she brought home a lot of goodies. So I pretty much, I got home from a meeting, ate some food, then threw down a butter tart, some uh, uh, flour, or the, the, not sprinkled donuts, like the little mini donuts with the white powder all over them. Oh yeah, powdered sugar. Powdered sugar, crushed that one, and like crushed a few of those, and then a cookie, and then I'm like, all right, here we go, time to jump on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on a sugar high. Oh, That's perfect. So, so. Yeah. I think it's I a good it. thing, likely to like eat my emotions instead of drink my emotions. Like yeah. I'm all about whiskey, but you gotta you gotta keep it all in balance, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Although I like all through <laughs> COVID, I just haven't stopped eating, and it definitely shows. I must have a lot more <laughs> emotions than you guys. What's that, Troy? I think I must have a lot more emotions than you two. <laughs> eat a lot very emotional, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you just hold it all in. Yeah. Just, <laughs> never yeah. letting that go. <laughs> uh, why not both? Oh, well played, Eric. Well played. Pair that for sure. Andrew, what do you got going on out west? Uh, you know, like Dave, a lot of sick children, unfortunately. Oh no. It like it seems like it's just last week it was both kids sick, but before they've just been taking turns alternating every week who's yeah. sick and who's not. And luckily, knock on wood, I have escaped all of their fevers. I'm sure now I'll get it, but just you your drink it stag, it'll kill it. That's right, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing I'm under uh, 120 proof and I'll be safe. I think so, right? Isn't that what we said about COVID way back when? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, and I only got that once. So. High proof. Only once? Yeah. Oh, step up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've this one it. that's going around, though, the kids are not enjoying it. Both my daughters have had fevers and coughs. Yeah. And it, thankfully, we haven't gotten the fevers, my wife and I, but we definitely got hit with like the nose and the cough and the congestion and. Never fun getting sick and having your family sick, but uh, you move on. Find ways to deal with it all. For sure. Um, so, so speaking of kids, but switching the subject a little bit, my youngest daughter lately has been has been on this kick of punching you in the beans. Mm. Me, specifically. <laughs> I don't know where she got this from, but Her she's like, I'm going to punch that. you in the beans, and just randomly no. she'll just swing, and it's terrible. She's right at that height, too. 
Um, Rochambeau. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I was talking to one of the guys that worked today. I was like, I don't know where she came up with this. Then I was like, oh, well, I taught her to go up to my wife right after she got out of the shower and slap her as hard as you can in the butt. And like Bryce is strong, like my youngest is super strong. So these slaps are like leaving handprints on my <laughs> wife's <laughs> butt as soon as she gets out of the shower. So then I was the guy that was at work and I was telling him the story. And he's like, Well, no wonder she taught her to, to punch in the beans. I was like, Did my wife do that? Did my <laughs> wife tell her to punch me in the nuts? Like, this is not cool. So that's what <laughs> so that's what the war in the house is right now so now i gotta teach her to do something else i was gonna I say you guys, are, you guys are battling each other through your daughter that's kind of amazing <laughs> through bryce yeah <laughs> although she is pretty she's too strong it's not good but, yeah i i gotta be careful walking around corners because she'll just like haul off and straight punch it's wear dangerous. a jock one day and then it'll like hurt her hand too much break her hand yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, but yeah. Bam, right in the beans. I mean, at least as she gets older, she'll be able to defend herself quite well. Yeah, I'm not worried about that one. Uh, yeah. Well, in that way, she's a little too uh, wild and free. So as time goes on, that's going to be uh, a tough one to handle, but it'll be good. <laughs> so, like, Corey, when you go back to the white, is that to lessen some of the other colors or? You mean it's like something you don't like or it almost seems like it takes away? So white and black make the other colors jump. So I always okay. go dark and then lighten it up and then put darker color back on top. So Sweet. it's uh, pure white or pure black is what makes the other colors pop up to the top. And if it's just color against other color, you lose some of the contrast. That's awesome. Very cool. Looking good, looking good. And then if I pick up, so like I put a little white over top of the yellow and it'll pick up some of the yellow. So then I can go back in and actually add highlights in other places. So if we, we probably aren't able to actually see that. But. I was going to ask if you ever mix paint, like if you ever mix colors or if it's just like natural blending kind of. Uh, no, usually just natural blending. Yeah. Troy's really into this. Yeah. Well, it's totally sweet. Totally sweet. It All is. I gotta do is donate some. I gotta. I, so I'm not 100 percent sure. How do we, how do I get that painting? Do I have to buy like a well? Is it raffle we ticket? haven't. We haven't. No, the ra We're not gonna raffle that because we want that right. to go to somebody that's gonna you know cherish it because it's 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 great. We don't want to just throw it in a five dollar and whoever gets it. So I think we'll probably do an auction style thing and we got to work out those details, but it's going to be some something like an auction style thing, whether it's live or whatnot. Uh we'll figure that out. Um but yeah it's gonna all the proceeds are gonna go towards the Movember campaign. It's gonna be awesome. So although the raffle is going to be for that Elmer T Lee and I'll throw that again if you just jumped oh, in. Gotcha. We're throwing the Elmer T Lee up uh, five dollars uh, to the November, November campaign will get you a spot, and we'll uh, do a randomizer and see who wins that at the end of the month. So uh, check that. And Corey, we have a comment from Tommy D. Uh, Tommy D. So, are you also doing texture or just color? Uh, both. So, I don't know if you can. Yeah. Yeah, it might be hard to see. So let's see. So can you see how thick some of that is? Oh, yeah, yeah look at that. Hot. Look at that. That's awesome how it's all Beautiful. blended together there. Very cool. What a treat. What a treat, Corey, doing this live and just watching a master at work. So... I think all we gotta do every week is have Corey paint another painting. I think we're gonna blow up. I think we're, we're we, we finally figured it out. It's the format. That's all we gotta do. How has painting helped you, Corey? It calms my head down. Um, Gives you something to focus on. Yeah, um, and it's just. Um, so I get when I I feel like there's echo here from my phone. So when I get anxious, it's just a whole lot of um, 
like your brain fills in the empty gaps, right? Usually with stuff that's not productive. <laughs> um, so it just keeps me, my brain busy. So it's just music and pain and I just get focused on that. And I can go through a couple hours at a time and not think about what's on my phone or what emails I'm missing or what work stuff's going on, um, which that's, that, that's the beauty of all of it. Mm. I love that. Uh, I've been working on some, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but I've been working on a, a project, a metalworking thing, a oh, tomahawk. Sick. Um, my dad and I, so my dad through COVID went into this like conspiracy theory, um, mindset and just kind of went really deep into stuff and was going kind of wild down that YouTube rabbit holes and whatnot. So I was like, Hey, we need to do something. Let's, let's give ourselves a challenge that we can focus on and try and learn something. So that was, uh, basically stock removal to make a knife. And, uh, it, we chose a tomahawk to start with because we had some steel already, um and it uh it's been really therapeutic because you go out there and i've done that all by file and the taper has been really severe on this one so it's a lot of work but you just go out there and, and file it and it's just like you said Corey, kind of your head goes out of everything and it shuts down and you're just working through stuff and and also being productive uh you see something take shape and i think that probably what happens with Corey as well you see something take shape and, and you feel like you've accomplished something and it's really cool show me so, this tomahawk again so what do you mean by you did it all by file like no forging no like hammering no no i just got the steel but i i the taper there i'm not sure if i can show you but the okay. taper it's fairly uh it's, it's like a long taper most axes have like a, just a really blunt kind of taper this one's more I want to throw it. That's my goal. Learn how to throw it. So, so did it all? It was already an axe. Like it already was a tomahawk, and you've been shaping it. No, I cut it all out. Like I cut the shape, the head gotcha. shape out. Yeah, I cut the head shape out. It was a, just a blank piece of steel, essentially. So, yeah, That's it's been awesome. fun. I'm a huge like forged in fire buff. Yeah, like, I'm not is it to have a like tool piece. steel or is it just regular steel again? That's D2 tool steel. So it's solid. oh okay. Yeah, it's solid stuff. Yeah, yeah. I still have to heat treat it. Um, that's the next step, but yeah, nice. it's been, been fun. So my dad though, who was down this weird rabbit hole of, of whatever, uh, now is into the knife making rabbit hole. So he's researched every topic and it kind of flipped him into a better mood and, uh, you know, just changed his mental state by, by putting some focus on learning that new tr trade, I guess you could say. So, um, yeah, I, I would challenge anyone that's kind of maybe in a rut to find something like that even if it's a weird thing that you're kind of curious about it's, it's a good thing to to challenge yourself with that so I love do you do anything to to do that for yourself you kind of work in a field that's productive though yeah so i feel like for me because i'm working and building all day like i would love to be able to do that as my outlet but i think it just would become more work for me mm. where sports is my outlet so gotcha any like activity exercise is my jam. So uh, I play basketball on Thursday nights with a group of friends and that just kind of started up this year. Um, play hockey every Saturday night. And then during the summers we were golfing every Wednesday. So I would, I try to get at least one or two days worth of a sport for me. And for me, that's when I can shut off my brain. When I step out on the ice to play hockey, like emails, texts, conversations, thoughts, everything is gone. And I'm just like chirping my buddies and having a good time. Like it, I turn into a different person. When I was younger, I used to turn into a bit of a, a goon and a loud mouth. Now I turn into a loud mouth and like just chirp and hang out with my friends. Like I find it so much fun just to, to yell at them and poke them and trip them and do silly things. Uh, but that's my outlet, just sweating, getting something in like that and doing it with a good group of friends to be able to hang out. So even in the summers golfing, it was leisurely, but like we're having great conversations while we're doing it. And it's just, it's taking you out of that element. My phone goes into the golf bag. I turn the ringer off. So I'm not hearing anything. The wife can call as many times as she wants, but I'm coming home when the game is done. And it just, that is my outlet. And it, it completely clears me to the point where 
I think it was after the golf weekend we did together, Ian. I, mm-hmm. because I was away for the weekend, I didn't do uh, my regular sport that week because I wanted to be able to be home to help out from what I had missed kind of thing. And the following week, I was like, man, I don't know what's going on with me. I just, I don't feel like myself. My head's a mess. And I was like, oh, I haven't, I haven't played hockey this week. And then my wife was like, it's only been a week. And I'm like, I know, right? Like, it's only been a week, but it already gets to me. So uh-huh. I realized how much of an outlet it is for me. Uh, and that's uh, got a great point. Uh, play and creativity is so great for your mental health. Uh, what do you all think? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Andrew, do you get do you do anything to work through the stress or uh lately it's been uh bathroom right now, which gotcha. I don't think actually helps me work through the stress <laughs> at all. <laughs> but uh I also uh enjoy building Lego. Oh nice. uh, that's I've awesome. got uh lots of big Star Wars Lego and then the one I've been working on lately is the Ghostbusters Ecto one. Cool car, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Clint also does Lego, I believe, doesn't he? Is isn't Clint into Lego? Maybe. I think he had something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I and love it. Clint's been around. Yeah. Uh, so I just got a couple of gifts from my daughters the other day, um, and it was Lego, and we built them together, and it was a lot of fun. And my oldest daughter, um, I have a hard time getting her to do anything. Uh, she's very like independent wants to do her own thing also if you ask her to do something that's not her idea not happening just she's very uh stubborn and and whatnot um but i handed her uh a lego a fairly challenging lego piece to build and i didn't think she was going to get close to it and like 20 minutes later she's like here check this out i was like oh where's the rest of it she goes it's done i was like that you complete this whole thing. So I found a, a niche for her to get into. And I think it's good where she sits cool. down and just, and then she's so proud of the work afterwards. So I could see that being uh, a real good outlet too. Uh, so I'm excited to play around with her, uh, with, with that stuff as she gets, gets going and be fun. So a funny Lego story. I remember it was like three or four years ago, we were doing a project for a family and inside their son's room, he had all of these Lego displays of all of these, creations he's done like the box set we put it together and he would have them there and i came home and my son all of the things that he would make he would take them all apart and create other random things he would never leave the piece the way that it came in the box like he would put it together and be like okay check i'm done that and then he would disassemble the whole thing and just start building random stuff with the pieces he had and i can remember being like man, like, why does he do that? Why won't he just leave? But then I think I had like a little bit of a struggle as a dad figuring that out, but then realizing that it's just the way his brain works. Like he doesn't care about keeping a finished piece to display. He wants to play with it again. And that's fine. And it's like, you, you can have many different ways of how you do things. But I think as parents, we want our kids to do certain things or you see somebody else doing something and you're like, well, why doesn't my kid do that? And you start to question things, uh, which I found interesting kind of working through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, And that's saying Corey built the Star Wars Lego um, Millennium Falcon for Eric. Uh, And if you haven't seen those, um, the Star Wars shirt he had um, kind of referenced that as well. And that, that was a huge feat. And, Corey spent a lot of time. We got some a lot, a lot of text uh, pictures of like, look at what we did and how long it took. And that Chinese light kit was a pain in my ass. Yeah. <laughs> Corey, can I ask, did you <laughs> drink while building the Millennium back. Falcon? Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I could not drink much by building the Millennium Falcon because there were too many tiny goddamn pieces. Yeah, <laughs> I I built a Star Destroyer first. Was my first big Lego, and we drank probably a case of beer the first night. Me and my buddy. Yeah, and out. we came back the next night. We're like, what did we do? Like pieces are all over the place, like wrong, like not like way wrong, but like one space wrong, which throws off everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so it's like, I guess this is not a drinking activity. Eric sneezes and empties worked on it a couple nights when I wasn't there. And I had to go backwards like 40 steps to find one tiny piece. Well, it, it could be a drinking activity. You just need to. You, it's just going to take way longer. Yeah. It's like money saving. 
Because that one can... piece is going <laughs> to... <Yeah. laughs> Troy, what about you? Do you get into anything? No. Uh, golf used to really be my kind of mental outlet. Uh, I get stressed out. We used to have... When I in my younger days, my family had a restaurant. My parents and I worked there. I was the manager of the restaurant. Is that so, why you hate food pictures? Probably, yeah. It's I, a P, it's PTSD, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> I yeah. just don't know why we want to show food pictures on our whiskey channel. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. So anyway, when I when I when I'm golfing, I usually don't think much about anything else. So it's a nice two to four hours of mental relief yeah and you like to fish is that is that some of that too oh i love to fish it's just uh you know we go on our canadian trip every year but that's kind of spoiled me for fishing here at home i i don't fish that much here local just mostly on our vacations yeah and i know will from the podcast uh got into fishing and i think that was a big part of it just time away and the fly rod and just uh, dave you're into you like fishing as well i think yeah when i can in yeah. the summer, if I can get up to a cottage and stuff, I love it. Just the time on the lake, like it's so peaceful. And I mean, you spend the entire time questioning everything you're doing. Am I using the right lure? Am I in the right spot? Am I at the right depth? You question everything, but it, it focuses your brain on something else still. But I also find like things like this to be super important and great for my mental health. Like, we do a podcast ourselves and but talking with Ian, hanging out with you guys. I think it's just being with people and having conversation is something that's so important and that changes your mindset. It gets you out of your day to day, the dramas, the things that you're dealing with, the stresses, and it allows you just to have either fun, random conversations, whether it's about John or uh, whether it's about Ron Jeremy and... <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that or whether it's about paintings and just hanging out like having conversations being with good people is everything like i always like realizing more and more and as my kids are growing up you realize the community you have around you dictates so much of who you are and like i'm just i'm so blessed to have such a, a great community of people around me and with me in my life to be able to share life with and do things with like ian so I think for people who are struggling, I think finding a community is super important, whether it's through whiskey, whether it's through painting, going to paint nights or sports or anything, finding a, a community of people that like really like cheer you on. Like even this, like Corey's painting, we're all cheering him on. We have no idea. We're not art professionals. We have no idea if this is good or terrible, but we love the guy. So we're going to cheer him on. If you like it, you like it. That's true. I mean, look at it. Like the yellow is almost gone now. I mean, it's just like it's just like a little a hint. I agree that everyone needs to find an Ian. <laughs> yes, right. Ian. I don't know about that. I, I well, I was gonna say the opposite of that. I was gonna say everybody <laughs> needs to find a Jason, um, because he's not here tonight. But um, that dude is the epitome of all that. Looks after you, checks in on you. You know, um, so this group and and it stems from that podcast um the whole group is, is just been really special uh so i'm thankful for that and community is such a big thing whether it's uh I, I have a friend that i walk the girls to school with um and they just got into the gym and that's been their community lately and it's been super healthy uh physically for them because they're they're working out all the time but mentally they're going to the bar after the gym with the group like and it's just this this vast majority or vast range of people all ages and they're hanging out and it's been really healthy for them to to go do that and be an outlet so uh, whatever that is find your outlet and and you know jump into something don't be afraid be yeah. challenge yourself and, and and give it a go yeah and i think because like even the idea of finding a community has changed like i remember even you talking about these random friends from the states that you drink yeah. whiskey with and being like ian are you okay man like you sure <laughs> And then you get to yeah. meet all these people and you're like, oh my God, yeah. Like, who would have ever thought that by listening to the podcast and hanging out with those group of people, you would create these friendships with people miles away that are impacting your own life so much, right? Yeah, it's a, it was a, it's a neat thing. It's, it's a neat thing. And, and that's true. Finding a community now, especially the last two years, has opened up 
so much more because you can go worldwide, whether it's video games or, uh, you know, all that stuff. And I, and I, I'm nervous about our future generations, uh, with some of that because of the lack of tangible, uh, closeness, but right. Um, but the opportunity to see people and talk to people and, and, you know, one of our friends, uh, one of our close friends, his wife passed away and his daughter's having a really rough time, but she's able to reach out to somebody that's virtual, uh, you know, across Canada, uh, I think it's in Calgary. So, um, you know, and, and Nat would, would be that as well. And that's, you know, uh, she helps people and, and all that stuff and she can do that virtually too. So reach out to people, whatever means you need, I think would be huge. So yeah, it's, it's definitely changed and, um, it's kind of kind of good and kind of awkward sometimes when you can't give somebody a hug, you know? Yeah. Like that, those hugs. And speaking of Jason, right, Troy, you got a Jason hug when he got to the airport. Oh yeah. I got several hugs, but yeah. And Troy was so happy. <laughs> you know, I'm not a hugger by nature, but I, I'm, I'm trying to learn. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What, how hard is it? Well, nobody hugged me until I was like, 32 years old and all of a sudden my whole family started hugging like we've been doing our whole lives so i don't even know how to do it right like like the bro hug i haven't figured out yeah you know what i mean it's supposed to be like a, i feel like i'm hugging like like say cory want to give me a hug i think i'm kind of getting in there a little too deep you know what i mean you know, like, i don't know no no cory's not bro hugging cory is like full-on hugging he's not bro hugging <laughs> it's all just a, it's a straight chest to chest Oh, yeah. yeah, I gotta, I gotta figure it out because I, I, I don't think my arm ought to go around any dude's waist. You know what I mean? Like it's like shoulder to shoulder, right? That's what we get. It. So it's I'm hard, learning. It's hard to know if you're the over guy or if you're the under. Right. Chris yeah. Tom. It's tough with me with Ian because he's taller, so it's harder to find out. I'm used to being the tall guy where I can just get around somebody, but with Ian, with Ian you're going around his waist. His chest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like trying to hug a grizzly bear. So. <laughs> and Conway saying, with you, Troy, I shook hands with my dad to say goodnight. Fair enough. Fair enough. I get that. Uh, Tommy D. Well. Can't let that happen. I don't know. Like, <laughs> de depends. Wait, so do you <laughs> nothing better than a hug and love you from your best friends and that's yeah. the truth uh sometimes that that fixes a lot of things so i love that awesome let's well let's uh check in on this thing now jason would be analyzing this like crazy if he was on so jason if you're in the if you're in the comments uh, what do you think? What's your uh, what's your tasting notes for the painting? It's a bunch of <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he did comment earlier saying, "You're all my people, and I'm proud of every one of you guys." Love it. Yeah. So, just back to what's happening. This is going to be auctioned off. Uh, for the Brolaws Movember campaign. And and if you want to do that, stay tuned to Instagram and uh, the YouTube channel because uh, we'll figure out a way to, to make this happen and we'll raise some funds for that. And Corey's so generous to do this and show us his uh, expertise uh, live. And then we have the bottle of Elmer T. Lee that's going to be raffled off. So every $5 put into the Movember, uh, take a screenshot of that and send it to, let me throw the banner up, flannel panel streams at gmail.com and i'll add you to the spreadsheet i'll also go in and see if i can uh see who's donated what and and uh make sure there's some um make sure they're put in there and on that note maybe we'll throw in just the tips oh boy troy's favorite segment that he stresses over this I'm gives totally troy anxiety you're totally you're totally prepared no, I'm totally unprepared. I because I, I don't trust myself to know what's cool and what's not cool. So it's like something I might be watching or listening to. I'm afraid to throw out here because like everyone's like, well, "That's that's." Not. I, th I think that's a, a comment just based on what we just said. It shouldn't matter. This is a yeah. safe spot, Troy. Well, you, you guys can let are the heads like touch. My, uh, it doesn't right. matter. It's a safe spot. This is where I find out what's cool is from you guys. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh, and Jason, I used to have a lot of social anxiety deciding whether to hug or not. So I decided one day to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and always go in for the hug. That's true. And Jason gives uh, J- Dave, you need to get a Jason hug at some point in your life. I, I don't know if we would let go. It might be the, <laughs> two epic huggers hugging and they're just like the world collapses. Actually, that might bring world peace. Who knows? Yeah, you could get a, a peace prize for that. Yeah. yeah. We got to get you to Utah. All right. Let's the go. next the next flannel fest. <laughs> yeah. fest. They're for real. Yeah, I was I was telling the story last night. I said we were wearing flannels everywhere we went, so we looked like a Canadian biker gang. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad thing. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Just the tip. Corey's busy, so I'm going to excuse him from this unless he wants to chime in at some point. Um, but Andrew, you got anything going on? Uh, I uh, I really like Andor. I don't okay. know if you guys are Star Wars fans or not, but oh, Andor has been really good so far. I haven't watched today's ep- today's episode. Yeah, I haven't watched today's episode, but yeah, after I haven't seen it either. It's uh yeah. And Yellowstone just started back up and I have not watched it, but I'm pumped to start watching it. Yeah. It's a great series. I haven't seen the first two episodes yet either, but I am looking forward to it. So it's on it's not just on Prime up here, it's on Paramount Plus. Oh, so you got to subscribe to something else. Doesn't it come? Or, to yeah, I I think it does come to Prime a day late. Yeah. Oh, for going deep Canadian here, I think it is on Prime. Just yeah. Oh, that just made my life a lot better. Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to subscribe. Yeah, I don't want to subscribe to something. Canadian finance minister, that is what is going to make the difference for you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Have you heard all the buzz about? Yellowstone so far, they uh, actually drank uh, Weller Twelve on the first episode, so that's yeah. that's been a lot of yeah. conversation about that. There is so many memes on the internet well, that's about that. Where it all is. Oh, there is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had a, a buddy message because Bullet used to sponsor them, so they used to always have a, bo- a bottle of Bullet in the background, and then so he messaged us to say that there was Weller Twelve in it. Yeah, Buffalo Trace. Spending yeah. the big bucks. Big bucks. Yeah. What are you drinking now, Andrew? Uh, I was going to join Dave. Oh, with the hey, W. Yes. Look at that. It's getting low, so somebody's got to come Canada. visit so we can polish off the bottle. So mm. does everybody in Canada get a bottle of that every year, or how's that work up there? I, I, no. Yeah, pretty much every year I get a bottle. No. So what, what, Dave, what Dave's drinking <laughs> came from Andrew in a sample bottle then we had it here and i left the little bit and gave it to dave so now dave's drinking with andrew it's a long process to make that happen yeah <laughs> literally yeah. coast to almost coast so love yeah. that it's fun uh so andor which i love as well and and that was troy's just the tip a couple weeks ago i think wasn't it yes so you are one of the cool kids you, you're yeah, a trend, you're yeah a but if you remember, I'm also one of the cool kids. <laughs> Even when I recommended it, I wasn't sure if it was cool. I was like, "Have you guys been watching it? I think I like it. Do you like it?" They're like, you know, so yeah. I'm pretty sure Eric Smith likes it, and he's definitely one of the cool kids. Oh yeah, so. yeah. Anybody yeah, that made cool. tattoos is cool. Yeah, that's true. So Andor, uh, Dave, any just the tips? Um, my just the tip is going to be Movember related, and I'm going to say therapy. It's not okay. something that I have done, but my business partner and brother-in-law, Joey, has started going to therapy. So he is one of the people that you, if you knew him, would be the least likely person that you would think to go to therapy. Yes, I'm shocked. The most, the I'm most shocked. He, he always seems like he has it together. He's the, the rock for other people. Uh, but because we've talked about it so much, he wanted to go and he's been dealing with some more stuff personally on his own side that he wanted to talk to somebody about. So he went through the process of finding somebody in his area, went and had one session and now he's had his second session and he said, it's been great. He's been getting a lot out of it and he's really glad that he did it. So I think that's a great, just the tip because I think as men, we often think we have to deal with our issues or struggles our past traumas and stuff like that. 
on her own. Um, and it's okay that you don't have to, and that you can go to talk to somebody because somebody outside of your bubble can have a lot of great perspective and insight into your life and what you're going through. So, uh, be, be a man and go to therapy if you need to. I love it. And so I, I'm sure Nat does too. Whiskey Mutant saying and or all day. <laughs> so if he's the cool, he, well, he is the cool kid yeah. or a cool man there. There it is. Troy, what do you think? Just a tip. So we got Andor and therapy, which I think is well, an awesome Movember yeah. tip. I hate to do it, and this is very obvious, but uh, I'm going to support Dixon. I knew it. Ooh. <laughs> I hate to recommend this because I don't want it to be hard to find, but this is good stuff. And Here, throw that up there. Where did you, when, oh. how do you get this stuff, you American? Oh, yeah. Welcome to America, bitch. Damn it. <laughs> But uh, does, does Dave have any left over or do you get rid of it all? No, he's got a little bit left over, but I'm telling you, it's only 104 proof. But I tried is he to gonna sell a shoulders. bottle to a Canadian? He might <laughs> and he, or make a trade for some of that George C. Steggett you're sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> but this stuff seemed to hit hard, it hit me like a ton of bricks tonight, but which is oh, a good no. thing, I guess. But did it? So, when did yeah, you get that bottle? Uh, I just got it over the weekend, and uh, just first time I tried it tonight. So nice. So is that in your local store now? Like it's no, just... we actually uh, got this in Kentucky. Okay. Yeah, but it's supposed to be in Ohio. I I haven't found it yet, but we'll see. Yeah, it's supposed to be there. So if you see an extra one, grab That's it. Good. Yeah, because I owe a lot of Canadians the... bottles already. So. Will it be Just released that... across the states or sorry, what's that, Dave? Will it be released across the states? That I bottle? don't know. It was just like it was like six or eight states they announced. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then online retailers have it too, or did. I don't know. It's sold out in a lot of places now though. Yeah. I think he's gonna do I think this is like a limited edition, and then he's doing a small batch later, right? I think that's what he yeah. said on the podcast. Yeah, he's got like three or four different releases coming out so this is the first and then another one of these and then there's like some single barrels or something like that i there was all oh, kind yeah of... i did say that conway saying it's in texas i he had that the other day too he got, i saw he i was in a texas up. a long time ago but i'm not in texas now should have planned yeah. that now. you you can't complain you gotta hook up with dr don <laughs> yeah the wiser's whole scenario so that that's kind of the same thing i guess they just yeah. uh, released the ten year is their yeah. new. So I think I'm going to be getting a bottle of that sent my way soon to be able to test for them. Nice. Yes. nice. That a boy. I love it. Um, my just the tip is going to be find yourself a friend, as Dave said earlier. Uh, that that was kind of my theme for the whole thing uh, in my head anyway. Today was find yourself a friend. We look at Corey. Um, graciously doing this we look at jason who you know we we've already boasted about and uh dave you know one of my closest friends locally and you know troy and andrew uh all over the world we have good people that we can check in on and do that and i'm thankful for that so i would ask that you find yourself a friend and conway and clint and all the other people that that are chiming in, chiming in too, eric and everybody um but find yourself a friend that you can really ask the the tough questions to um because that that's going to be when you can be real with somebody that's that's when it's going to hit the hardest so be real and uh and be there so let's check in on this thing oh hit. I... look at that I don't know if you saw but he took that gold at the end like a mustard bottle just <laughs> <laughs> i love it it's a screenshot right there for anybody 813 art house and yeah um Amazing. Love it. Amazing. Corey, do you have a just a tip if you're around? Yeah. Uh just try new things when you feel like you're stuck in a rut. Like uh mm -hmm. you just keep doing the same thing over and over and expect something to, to change on its own. It usually doesn't. So get out of your comfort zone sometimes and that'll put you actually in a better place. I love it. Love it. Love it. All right. 
we are at an hour Corey, it's amazing thank you man that is fantastic so cool what do you guys think love it it's amazing you did that in an hour yeah yeah i love it that's pretty fast <laughs> <laughs> how long do you normally take Corey? Uh, as long as it takes but not normally an hour <laughs> <It's usually laughs> very cool so stay tuned to the flannel panel instagram stay tuned to the flannel panel youtube channel if you're not uh subscribed please do so and then smash that like button uh tommy d says more purple tommy says <laughs> that seems to be a common theme Corey. the the purple just hits yeah i don't um, know about the purple i love it yeah. more cowboy <laughs> there it is yeah um so stay tuned and, and you uh, can be in the running to, to take that painting home and support some awesome uh, men's health initiatives that are that are well needed in, in the country. Also, Elmer T. Lee, uh, every $5 at the Movember website, uh, send that to um, uh, send that to flannel panel streams at gmail.com and we will get you into a raffle. You have till the end of the month. But let's see some donations going up now. The link is in the description, so please check that out. Uh, and check out the Bro Laws on Instagram. Though I'm sure they'll post a ton more in the next couple of weeks with everything. We all, we all, lastly, uh, Dave, we're doing a tasting, I think, aren't we? Yes, we are. So what, what what's happening with this? What do you think? I don't know. We're still figuring it out. We've got to figure out how we get people into the tasting. But we've picked our bottles, I think. Yeah, I think five so. Five bottles that we're going to go through. If I can remember off the top of my head, we were going to do a Blanton's. Uh, nope. Pike oh. Creek. Pike <laughs> Creek, the wine finish. That's a super special one, too. Uh, Pike Creek wine finished uh, 15-year-old, which is a Canadian whiskey that uh, was a limited release. So you can't get it anymore. E.H. Uh, e. Taylor Small Batch, a rare breed from about five years ago. It's an old labeling. Um, Stag Junior, I think it's Batch 9 something like that an old bottle of steak junior and then alberta premium cast strength batch two that's going to be the lineup i think yeah. we got about eight slots if i'm not wrong uh so if you're interested uh send a message to dave at the brolas ig account and we'll uh we'll talk about Do I have that to fly to ontario for this no we will get you the samples line. we will get the samples and we'll do a zoom tasting so it'll be fun okay yeah yeah i think it'll be a fun have you guys i'm oh, sorry to just uh have you tried batch four yet of Alberta Premium? I have. And? Well, I didn't try it well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of batch you three. Were and, I had a lot of batch three, and then I tried batch four. Uh, so I should do a side by side at some point. Um, <laughs> but I didn't like it as much as batch three, from okay. what I remember. Batch three was really, really good. And yeah. that's a yeah. 63.7 one. Awesome. The batch four is sixty three point five, I believe, and it's it's still good, but I think it was had a little less character. So, oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. but still for the price, I, I think it's a solid whiskey. Yeah, I've been cruising through my batch three bottle. It's pretty good. It's re I really like that one. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be doing that that tasting, and then uh, we've also had some other companies and small companies contribute stuff that we're going to be doing either raffles for or uh or giveaways for as well to people that donate we've got uh boss man which is a floor protection company that uh we use on all of our projects they sent us out a bunch of rolls of their floor protection um as well as the small uh business guy who made some custom coasters with silhouettes of our faces with mustaches no on them so it's a slate coaster with it etched into it. They look super, super cool. So he's going to be sending those out my way that we're going to be throwing into the raffle as well. Very cool. I love yeah. that. I love that. It's going to be fun. So that's, uh, where do we find you? Bro Laws on Instagram. Bro Laws are us on Instagram. That's right. And I think we're yeah. Bro Laws on TikTok if you want to see us dance, but... Our following on TikTok's 90% women, so you know what we nice. do there. <laughs> <laughs> Troy just got interested. He's like, yeah. what's, what's this TikTok stuff? What is TikTok? About? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're opening an OnlyFans next. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the calendar is going to be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Corey, any last words? Let's throw that thing up uh, again. Stay well, yeah. 
stay buttoned up all right and until next time let's do that stay buttoned up everybody we'll leave that up for a second cheers everyone cheers, like cheers. comment subscribe uh donate to november we will see you guys next week take care everyone